Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again in today's video. A criminal Karen sued me after she cut down my tree without permission, which then fell on her car, thus destroying it. This is a $185,000 lawsuit. Here is what happened, let's dive right into the video. So one thing I love about my home is the fresh smell of the morning dew hitting my face as I have my first sip of coffee in the morning, sitting on my porch and from there I can see almost all the land that surrounds me, the big trees and the leaves falling off. My family has owned this land for decades and it has many hidden treasures inside. One of those treasures is Earl, one of the trees sitting at the end of the property. Earl is a great basin bristlecone pine tree that has been sitting on this land for as long as I can remember and for as long as my father and grandfather could remember as well. Its value was hundreds of thousands of dollars because of how old this ancestral tree was. It was named Earl because of my great grandpa who lived a long healthy life just like the tree which still remained. We had theories of it being older than the house or the entire county around it. But the thing is, Big Earl was here long before us and was gonna be long after we all left as well, or that's at least what I thought, because apparently, no matter how strong and big it was, how many storms and heat waves it had endured, Earl had never met something like a Karen. So Karen did not seem that nice already when she moved to the house next to us, she was polite but had a bit of a fake smile and a scrunched nose every time you tried to say something to her. As if something just smelled bad, but she didn't do anything to bother us, at least at first. That was until Karen got the brilliant idea of putting a fence around her property, she walked around the place between the grass and the trees with a contractor following her as he tried to take notes of her quick gibberish. According to her, the area boundaries were not clear and she wanted to fix that, so she got the property plans and thought of a big fence to solve that. Until she reached Earl. According to Karen and her fence, Earl's branches were on her property and she asked, well not exactly, she demanded that I cut them that same afternoon when she came knocking on my door under the pouring rain. I tried to talk to her and I told her that we would review it when the rain had stopped and her face contorted in a way I had not seen before, but she dropped the subject and just left. My husband and I thought about checking whatever issues Karen had with the property borders that afternoon, but the rain did not stop and apparently Karen's plan for the fence did not stop either, because imagine my surprise when I heard a weird sound in the distance at night. A weird metallic sound followed by a clashing noise. I did not think much of it, but in the morning, as I sat on the porch as I usually do, the view in front of my eyes had something different that day and unfortunately I saw Earl was gone. I almost jumped in my spot when I realized this and immediately called my husband as if I feared that I've gone mad and I was just imagining things. He was as shocked as me when he noticed the branches of the big old tree missing from the landscape. Good old Earl laid on the floor, now a felled tree, after all of those decades of standing proudly in our property and I just felt a mix of rage and sadness that ate me alive inside like nothing had done before. My husband tried to call my name, but it was too late, I was already on my way to Karen's door, with rage running through my veins. She opened the door as if nothing had happened with her scrunched nose when I asked about a tree. Well, I told you it was in my property and you did not even do anything about it, she tried to reply to me. Even when I told her the value of the tree she had just cut off, she just shrugged and tried to brush the issue off saying it was some old rotten tree anyway and that she, yes you heard me right, she was gonna sue me because the tree fell on her car since apparently they sucked at physics in school and her idiot husband and his friends cut down the tree in a stupid way. I was not gonna drop the issue of course, she had trespassed on my property in the middle of the night to cut off a piece of history that was worth thousands of dollars as if it was just a minor thing. We had to get the property line surveilled to prevent anything else from escalating further. And by the way, ripe stars, unfortunately I had to censor a lot of personal information there because OP was, in my opinion, sharing too much and he might have gotten doxxed if I would have read that in a YouTube video. And really, I don't want to expose anyone's privacy, so that's why I tend to censor things like that. Either way, a few days later I got a lawsuit notice from Karen for the damages that, according to her, I had inflicted on her car. I could not believe my own eyes when I saw that paper, but I was confident though that we were not in the wrong here, she was the one that had illegally come into our property to destroy a piece of it and nature had done the rest of the job. 
Luckily for us, so showed the evidence. The surveillance proved that our ancestral tree was always on our property and there was not even a centimeter of it passing onto Karen's land. She had no right to cut it in the first place, let alone without our permission and by her own means and let's not even talk about her car. We had absolutely nothing to do with that. You should have seen her face when she was ordered to not only pay the legal costs but also the $185,000 for the worth of the tree that she had taken from us and also we have to add to that the fact that she lost her brand new car too. Her face was so red that it seemed as if it was gonna explode with rage. She did not say a word as her face slowly contorted and her nose lifted in its usual manner. A little vein in her forehead appeared to be about to pop off at any given second. I think she wanted to say and do so many things to us but she didn't do so because we were in front of a judge and he wouldn't believe the other things we found out about our dear neighbor Karen. She seemed to have a big record of harassing past neighbors through legal threats. She did this from one house to another, to any place she landed on, but I'm guessing neither of her previous feuds had cost her so greatly as this one did. Because Karen not only had to pay the amount that I mentioned before, she also ended up facing criminal charges for trespassing our property and for destroying our tree and for abuse of litigation. She ended up behind bars for a significant amount of time. Karen had a history of harassment and threatening her neighbors in the past using legal tools to back up her insane claims and complaints. However, this frivolous lawsuit together with her impulsive actions crossed criminal territory on this occasion, resulting in felony charges for her. As for me, I still sit on my porch in the mornings feeling the morning dew hit my face. With my view having one tree missing unfortunately from its usual splendor, but with justice definitely being served. And here ripe stars, I am happy that OP got all this money, but sometimes when there are so many memories attached to something, even if it's just a tree, money cannot heal all the wounds. Either way, I hope OP will never see that Karen neighbor again. Either way, the next one is a revenge story. This one was posted by user commercial at 6690 on r stories, which is our own subreddit. So way back in 1972, my dad and I were on our way to a lake to do some base fishing at a resort lake town in East Texas. As you entered the city limits was a posted speed sign of 30 miles per hour. My dad was driving 30 miles per hour on the money as we entered the lower speed zone. We were pulled over less than 100 feet upon passing the sign. The cop came back and asked if we knew how fast we were going and if we saw the sign as we entered. Dad said, yes officer I did and I was doing exactly 30. The officer said, no sir, you were speeding and showed my dad the radar gun and the speed indicated that we were going 30.17 miles per hour. My dad was rather pissed at this and said, well, I don't have a speedometer that registers in point MPH, so how was I supposed to know that I was 0.17 over the limit? The cop simply fouled dad, you could have just as easy gone 0.17 miles under as over. We had to go to the courthouse and go before a judge to pay a stupid speeding ticket. As my dad pleaded not guilty, dad started some talk with the judge. Asking if he did much fishing in the local lake, it was the one thing the judge loved to do. So they chatted about 15 minutes before my dad told him that he was sent to this town to review the resort for one of the biggest fishing magazines of the time. My dad then paid the fine and said goodbye and have a good day. So then we did our tour of several lakeside resorts, fishing guides and the town in general and the reviews for the most part was very positive but it blasted the local law enforcement for the speed traps to catch the non-resident people coming through town. Stating how he was ticketed for not even being a full one mile per hour over the speed limit and how the court system upheld such minor infractions with inflated fines. And by the way ripe stars I'm curious is that still a thing nowadays that you can get fined even if you are just one mile per hour over the speed limit? Where I'm from there's always a sort of tolerance. I'm not sure how exactly how much it is in miles per hour since where I'm from it's kilometers per hour. But in general there's like a tolerance of maybe plus minus four or five kilometers per hour which I suppose might be three miles per hour. Anyway let me know how it is for you where you are from. Anyway, and his overall recommendation was to avoid this town and stay on the main highway until they reached the next town over. That had almost as good fishing accommodations. There was a bit of a fallout after the article was published. The mayor of the town contacted the magazine asking for them to publish a retraction of the article because a week after it came out tourism and fishing had dropped substantially for being peak season. 
The magazine referred them to contact the author of the article to see he would be willing to make a retraction on his review. Dad simply told him if they were not able to make enough from all the business generated by sportsmen, then they deserved what they got for being so greedy and corrupt. My dad did give him a way out though, he said you can retrain the law officer and ask the judge to put in writing that he will retire at the next election. Then I will give the town the good rating it deserves. He only got half of what he asked for, they fired the cop but the judge was scared enough to start doing his job. My dad kept his word and told the readers the issue of the speed traps had been resolved by the mayor and to please enjoy all the amenities the town had to offer. And the next one is an entitled people story and if you have enjoyed the story so far please don't forget to like the video and maybe even post a comment because that would help me tremendously. This story about an entitled train Karen was posted by user aggravatingbench41 on r slash ripe stories. So this happened a year ago and sharing it would be interesting. So for some background in a previous post I stated how I work with coyotes which is true but when I am not working with wild animals I lend my services out of state for a Pennsylvanian regional railroad known as the Reading Blue Mountain and Northern as a brakeman slash fireman. Now how was I able to do this? I was 18 at the time. Well, I have connections there with the president and founder of the railroad, so I spent most of 2022 working part time for the Iron Horse Rambles with Reading 2102 and the most notable the Iron Horse Rambles double heater with Reading 425, locally known as the Blue Beauty. Also, just for common knowledge, steam locomotives run with four crew members, the engineer, the fireman, the brakeman and the conductor. The brakeman often works as a secondary fireman to let the main fireman rest, but the brakeman and conductor work as seekers to help let the engineer know what is ahead. With all of that out of the way, let me wind the clock back to September 20, 2022. For the most part, the doubleheader went smoothly. I was assigned to work on the 425 steam engine and the run itself is about a 2.5 hour round trip each way. However, it's anything but relaxing, but the joy you get as you roar through towns and get the attention of rail fans is indescribable. So the ride up to the terminating station was smooth sailing and I go through the safety procedures to get the train turned around so both engines could reverse into the station. Note that the train consisted of 20 passenger cars, so it took a good while, but eventually the train stops at the station, so the 2102 and 425 could uncouple and be on temporary display and open for cab tours. I was in charge of giving the tours on the 425 and for the most part every rail fan was super happy to see me and I allowed them to ring the bell and blow the whistle until Karen and her demon spawn child climb up into the cab. As usual, I was being my polite self and giving details and stats about the engine. I then told them the top speed of the engine when it was built, how it came into ownership of the Reading and Northern and how this engine was due for a boiler inspection. I was about to allow her kid to blow the whistle until I looked at the pressure gauge and it read 200 psi. It needed to be around 240. So I grabbed the shovel and politely asked the mother to give me a second so I could shovel the coal and just as I step on the lever that opens the firebox door and as I shovel away I noticed the kid reaching his hand out towards the open firebox. Instantly my protective sibling side came out. Me, what on earth do you think you're doing? Do you know how dangerous that can be? Child, mommy, that man won't let me touch the boiler. Karen, excuse me, sir, why won't you let my angel touch? The Karen stopped shocked to see me covered in soot. Me, is there a problem? Karen, you're just a teenager. How the hell did a filthy n teen like you get to drive this engine? I don't think you're old enough to operate it. Me, ma'am, I'm of the legal age to work in the cab, but I'm also obligated to ensure the safety of those who tour it. Your son could have received third degree burns from touching the metal on the boiler. So for that reason, please leave before you are charged with trespassing on railroad property. The Karen shrieked, no, you're the one who's trespassing. Now get off. The Karen grabbed me by my overall and tries to throw me out of the cab. Now I gripped the railing on the outside because if she had succeeded I would have fallen 15 feet on my back onto a railroad track rail which would cause serious injury to me. Luckily my saving grace would be that the local tourist train was just returning and police were called onto the scene and the Karen was arrested and charged with battery and assault. All the while the kid was crying but he eventually calmed down and apologized for causing a whole problem and that he should have known better. 
After that, I asked the kid if he had someone else besides his mom and he said that his dad was waiting for him and his mom back in the place the trip started. So after speaking with the crew members who collectively agreed to forgive the kid, we wanted to cheer him up so we called the dad and filled him in on the situation. And he said that he would be on his way, but we assured him that he can stay there and that his son did not know any better, so for the return trip he was allowed to ride in the cab of 2102. The kid screamed out in excitement and for the return trip he was laughing out of joy. And once we got to the shops to uncouple the engine, the kid met up with his dad and both of them had to drive up to the town where the kid's mom was arrested. I did not press charges since technically I was a volunteer so I let the company deal with the whole situation. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, props to OP, I could not have handled this situation as gracefully and calm as he did. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. Even just having to write the title for this story makes me feel like my blood pressure is rising. I hope that one day I might look back on this and think it was funny or at the very least not cause me to rage. Well, before I talk about the exact incident that happened, I wanna tell you about my family. I am a black female. My husband is a very pale Irish man, as is his mother. Now, my mother-in-law does not like me, but it was not always the most obvious thing in the world. She was always passive-aggressive to me for the most part, and I had a strong feeling it was because of the difference in race. I could not really prove that though and was not gonna tell my husband that his mother was racist and start a big fight unless she did something. Fast forward and we had a beautiful son that hilariously enough looks like a clone of my husband. Despite me giving birth to him, he is the palest baby in the world but to me that does not matter because I love him and he is healthy. Due to the pandemic and living in another part of the country, we had not actually seen my mother-in-law for a couple of years. This meant she never got to visit and see her grandchild yet. Hopefully that background will help in a little while when it comes to her reactions and attempting to say how I kidnapped my own child. So the day she was meant to come over, things got a little hectic and to ignore irrelevant details to the story, we ended up meeting with her at the mall. That is not the easiest place to take an almost two-year-old kid, but I was sure it would end up fine. I took him to the bathroom while my husband was waiting at the store that she was meant to be meeting us at. Instead, I walked out of the bathroom with my son and actually ran right into her. I really don't like being alone with this woman, but it was happening and I was just gonna roll with it. Me? Mother-in-law, hey, I thought we were meeting you over by this store. My husband is over there waiting for you, so we can just walk together. Mother-in-law? Oh good, I cannot wait to go and meet my grandchild. Me? Um, actually he's right here with me. I assumed that she just didn't see him because he wanted to walk and was kind of hiding behind one of my legs. I then moved so she can get a better look at him and I assume she will go full grandma mode. Instead though, she makes a face and turns towards me. Mother-in-law, what are you doing with that kid? Where is his mom? Me, this is my son. Mother-in-law, don't be ridiculous. Somebody like you cannot make a child that looks like that. Where's his real mom? Me, I know he looks a lot like husband but he really is mine too. I was starting to feel awkward and shot off a text to my husband while my mother-in-law knelt down and was trying to talk to my son. Mother-in-law, sweetie, where's your mommy? Mommy is a word he does know at least and that just sent him off saying it over and over again. I don't think he knew what she wanted, he likes to take the words he knows people say to him and start repeating it. Mother-in-law then turns to me and looked extremely angry. Mother-in-law, I cannot believe that you would do this and kidnap a poor child. Knowing that you and my son could never make a good looking baby, so you just go and steal a child. Security! She yelled and grabbed my son's hand before trying to walk away with him. I didn't even think and instead jumped right in front of her and was not letting her get anywhere. Somebody hearing the screaming must have called security because they showed up within a few minutes. I could not get two words out and she was just yelling that I had stolen this child. I was so angry and the security seemed to be taking her side because of how different I looked compared to my kid. However, I had the stretch marks to prove that I housed him for 9 long months but they didn't care. My husband finally got my text and had shown up seeing my son in the arms of his grandma, screaming and me about to be detained by security. He asked what was going on and security tried to tell him to keep moving, not realizing that he was involved in all of this. Dada is another word my son knows and upon seeing his dad he started screaming it. 
Security must have called the actual police because they started showing up and everybody kind of stopped once they realized my son was calling out towards his dad. I guess he said mummy enough before and thinking back maybe if I started him saying that it should have helped but knowing what was going on they might have assumed my mother-in-law was just an older mother. The officers started telling my husband about how I had supposedly tried to kidnap my own son and this lady was stopping me from leaving the mall with him. Now my husband has seen people in stores look at our family and have judgmental faces, I think he had something boiling inside of him for a while because he exploded on his mother for the first time since I knew him. Husband, what the hell are you doing? You came here specifically to meet my wife, my child and me. What possessed you to see her with him and not think for one second that he was our kid? I am sick of your subtle racist attitude and getting my wife almost arrested for kidnapping her own kid just crossed the line. Unless you want to change and show me that you're not the person I think you are in this moment, you will never see me or my son again. Then he turned his attention to the security and officers. My husband said, the woman you are trying to arrest is my wife and the mother of that kid. I'm sure if you spoke to her for one minute she would have shown you plenty of pictures of the two of them together. He might look like me but his personality comes right from her and he knows that's his mom because a kid doesn't just look at the color of somebody's skin and makes assumptions. I had to calm him down because he was really getting steamed and I was a little worried that he might have gotten arrested. What nobody noticed was that while mother-in-law and me were fighting she must have scratched me at some point because I was bleeding. The police turned to my husband and me and asked if we wanted to press charges against mother-in-law for assault and for attempting to kidnap our kid. Her trying to take him and walk away without my permission apparently counted as that. I wanted to do that and my husband fully backed me up on it. Due to the situation of my injury not being severe and him technically being her grandson, no court was gonna throw her in prison. Instead we were told the motions we could go through if we wanted to get a restraining order later down the road against her for both of us and our son. I really wanted to try and make things work before all of this so my son could have a grandma. In the end though he doesn't deserve one that refuses to accept our family. If she tries to touch him again I might end up being the one arrested for assault because I no longer will deal with her antics. And with this we have reached the end of the video, however if you cannot get enough of my content please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.